as we've already heard the recent dramatic increases in food prices are having severe consequences for poor countries and poor people around the world food prices rose by nearly forty percent in two thousand and seven and another forty percent as we saw earlier in early two thousand and eight and nearly all agricultural commodities including rice corn or maize as it's called internationally wheat meat and soybeans have been affected in response to these price increases food riots have occurred in many developing countries including egypt haiti indonesia and senegal according to the food and agricultural organization of of the united nations thirty seven countries are now facing food crises of various levels of severity the primary triggers that have set off this rapidly spiraling food prices are First of all, as we're discussing here, biofuel policies, which, as we've heard, have led to large volumes of food crops being, being shifted into bioethanol and biodiesel production. Secondly, bad weather in key production areas. This has been very clear in the case of wheat, where severe droughts in Australia and Ukraine uh, uh, resulted in very high increases in prices in the last two years. Third is the higher oil prices, which have contributed to increased costs of inputs, such as fertilizer and pesticide as well as transportation and marketing costs uh, in the food sector. But on top of these trigger triggers, prices have moved sharply upward in the last few months as a result of poor international uh, governmental policies, such as the rice export ban in, in Vietnam and import subsidies in, in uh, India and elsewhere, which have tried to protect their own consumers, but at the cost of higher prices for everyone. These, in turn, as you, as you are going to discuss in a future meeting, have then led to various types of, of speculative trading and, and storage behavior in reaction to these kinds of policies. However, the preconditions for rapidly rising food prices stem from underlying long-term trends in food supply and demand globally during the past decade and longer. Uh, rapid income growth and urbanization in Asia has led to increased demand for wheat, meat, milk, oils, and vegetables and has put very strong demand pressure on soybeans, corn, and other coarse grains as livestock feed. Something that hasn't been noticed as widely is that stronger economic growth in sub-Saharan Africa since the late, late 1990s has also significantly increased demand for wheat and rice, which are our basic staples uh, in, in, in Africa. On the supply side, long-term underlying factors include a se severe underinvestment in agricultural research and technology development worldwide, and in rural infrastructure, particularly irrigation and roads in developing countries, as well as trends towards a growing scarcity of land and water globally. As a result, there has been a long-term and severe decline in productivity growth for grains such as corn, rice, and wheat, and many other crops. Let me then take a, a look specifically at the role of, of, of biofuel policies in, in the food price hikes. Rapid increase in demand for in production of biofuels, and particularly bioethanol from corn and sugarcane, has had a number of effect, effects on, on supply and demand systems, with, with shifts away from, from uh, producing corn for food, and also in, in shifts of soybeans and other crops in, into corn. Interestingly, even rice has been affected by these shifts because in, in, in Asia and in parts of Latin America, second and third seasons or drier season rice has also been shifting into uh, corn uh, prior to the rapid uh, recent run up in, in rice prices. These indirect demand and supply side effects in other crops then have also uh, caused bioethanol production to, in, to boost the price of rice and, and wheat and other crops. To, to look more specifically at the impact of biofuel demands on food prices, we've done a number of analyses at, at IFPRI. First, we compared actual food price changes since, since 2000 with a counterfactual simulation uh, with lower biofuel demand corresponding to the 1990 to 2000 rates of growth in, in, bio, in biofuel demand. Secondly, we did a couple of forward-looking uh, assessments somewhat similar to what, what Dr. Babcock uh, has presented. First was to look at an impact uh, on food prices of a, a freeze in biofuel production from all crops at 2007 levels, and then uh, what would happen if there was, in fact, a moratorium on biofuel production after, after 2007. Uh, we, did this, we did these analyses using our, our, our impact model, which is a, a global modeling framework uh, that covers uh, supply and demand prices and trade for inter for agricultural commodities uh, for 115 countries around the world, as well as the global totals. 
Turning first to the analysis of price evolution over the last seven years, because again, we, we compared a simulation of actual demand for food crops as, bi as biofuel feedstock from 2000 to 2007 the scenario uh, looking at uh, the slower growth rates uh, prior to 2007. The difference then in, the, in, the, in these two simulations shows the, the contribution of uh, biofuel demand on uh, price increases. Based on our assessment, uh, uh, the increased biofuel demand corresponding to the boom since 2000, 2000 accounted for about 39 percent of the increase in real corn prices and about just over 20 percent of the increase in, in rice prices and wheat prices uh, during that period. We then looked at the projected impact of a, of a freeze and uh, where we, what would happen if in fact biofuel, uh, uh, crop-based biofuel production were frozen at 2007 levels. From this, we, we project that by 2010, corn prices would decline by about 6 percent and, and there would be a 14 percent decline by 2015. So this is somewhat uh, comparable to some of the simulations that Dr. Babcock has shown. We also get then price reductions for oil crops, cassava, wheat and sugar, uh, about half of the, the uh, results for corn prices and, and the detailed results are in my written testimony. Then what would happen if instead we had, we uh, actually abolished biofuel, uh, sort of a very severe policy of abolishing uh, uh, ethanol production from food crops uh, uh, by, uh, in, in 2008. This would have uh, more dramatic impacts, but again, the, the result would be a 20 percent drop in, in the price of corn, 14 percent drop in the price of cassava, 11 percent for sugar, 8 percent for wheat, and only about a 4 percent decline in, in the price of rice. So that, so in conclusion, we see that there are various pressures have on international grain markets that, that have contributed to rapid price increases during the past several years. And biofuels have been just one contributor, but certainly a very important one, especially for corn. The slowing growth in grain supplies and rapidly growing demand for grain for all uses, including food and feed, which have been made worse by recent policy-induced distortions, however, are long-term underlying factors that cannot be easily uh, reversed. If, if the world food economy is to meet the increased demand for food, feed, and, uh, and fuel that is being driven by rapid economic growth, and also to cope with future challenges of, on land use pressures, and we'll see soon the increasing pressures from climate change, we also have to deal with long-term agricultural productivity growth issues. Higher food prices have reduced poor people's access to food, uh, which has possible long-term and irreversible consequences for health, productivity, and well-being, uh, particularly if higher prices lead to continued reductions in food consumptions by infants and, and, and preschool children. If the current biofuels ex expansion continues on its rapid levels, there can be expected to be a reduction in calorie availability uh, in developing countries relative to, uh, the, to uh, uh, a slower growth rate in biofuels. And you can expect increases in, in mal malnourishment in a number of countries. It's therefore important to find ways to keep biofuels from worsening the, the, the food price crisis and a reduction in mandates or elimination of, of subsidies for biofuel production would contribute to somewhat lower food prices, as, as we have seen. But it's perhaps even more critical to focus on boosting agriculture productivity growth and improving uh, in investments in rural infrastructure in, in developing countries. These factors would continue to drive the future health of the agriculture sector and provide the largest role in, in determining food security and human well-being of, of the world's poorer and more vulnerable populations. The United States can play a leading role in boosting agricultural growth by increasing investment in agricultural research and supporting reforms targeted at increased productivity on a global basis. And a major pro program of enhanced investment in these areas uh, could put the United States back into a, a very strong uh, moral and, and practical leadership role in, in boosting agricultural productivity growth and reducing world hunger. Thank you.